final boss is a proper, pretty good challenge. The overall game is a challenge. And one of my favorite aspects is the Dahaka. I love the Dahaka. And I hate the Dahaka. People who've played this game will know what I mean. Other than just his badass cool design with these glowing blue eyes and sort of horns. There are these sequences of the game where he chases you and he is just merciless. If you slow down just a little bit, he will get you and he won't just like grab you and smash you or something. He has these tentacle-like things come out of his torso and his stomach that will grab you pull you back into his stomach where he absorbs you and that'll be that you know because he's fixing the timeline it just has that extra kick of this guy doesn't kill you he obliterates you you cease to exist thankfully when being chased by him you can still rewind time so if you are a little too slow or something you can get another chance it's also pretty cool that if you do rewind time as he's saying something, because if you just hear what he's saying, it makes no sense. It sounds like gibberish to us. If you rewind it, he's saying something backwards. You know, and they're basically taunts also, but they're still cool. And you have to play it backwards to hear it. You know, talk about heavy metal. Also, when he chases you, these tentacles of his was all will also come out of the walls to try to get you as you jump and run past areas. I mean, when he's chasing you, it is some of the most intense experiences I've had playing video games. And I've played my share. I mean, even when you die from it, you still kind of get that endorphin rush and you just want to try one more time to see if you can't get away from him. The one thing I really don't like about being chased by the Dahaka is a couple of times they put like barrels in your path that you have to break. That's really cheap. Come on, guys. As of this one, there are less uses of the Sands of Time. In the first one, you could get, I think, maybe a dozen or so containers or uses. In this and the next one, it's six tops. Although. You can sort of recharge it by breaking vases. You could break vases in the first one too, but now and in the next one, they sometimes contain sands. And I have no clue why. This game is so emo, you can't even save your game without looking at a crying statue. In this one and the next one, they've combined saving and getting more health. I mean, in this one, there are are still occasionally places where you can drink otherwise, but other than that, you drink and save the same place. This is the only one of them where you move back and forth between two periods of time, and these same areas over and over. I don't mean areas that look just like they're the same, I mean you will move through the same areas several times. Now, some of them will be in different now some of them will be in the two different time periods one of them is you know the present very desolate dead and in the past there was more plant life this is also the only one where you have a map when I say map I don't mean like a proper road map I mean basically just a map that tells you essentially where you are on the island you can't tell if you're facing the right direction but if you progress through the next little bit and then check with the map again, you can tell if you're getting closer or further away from your objective. Yes, this one you can seriously get lost. If you don't know where you're going, you can run in circles without even realizing it. You'll notice that many of the rooms you go into, there'll be a button for the door on both sides of the door. In all three of these you can get life bonuses, but in this one and the next one, you have to go through traps to get it. Some will like going over the same areas over and over again. You know, you get used to, okay, that's how I get from point A to point B in this area. And it can be pretty cool to see the same area in the other time, and something that was fixed will now be broken, or vice versa. 
I was personally fine with it. I think I do overall prefer the more linear nature of, well, the other five games. Because you're still not really choosing where to go or how to approach something. It's more figuring out where to go and when. And of all of them, this is the one where you can spend the most time really not knowing where you're supposed to be going. In addition to a weapon in each hand, you can also now toss the second weapon. It will eventually break, and you can pick one up at the press of a single button. The prince will kick it up into his hand. There's also this really annoying enemy type that explodes when you kill it. And it'll hurt you if you're too close. And again, you might be stuck in a combo. And in general, it's just difficult to get away from it because you can't really do a proper attack that just throws it away unless you do it at one exact point. And again, you might at this time be surrounded by other enemies. You get one or two new sands of time powers for combat. You can sort of knock enemies down with this big blast. They also changed the really fast attack one. I personally think this change was for the worse, but one thing that's kind of cool about fighting the demonatrices is sometimes they'll attack you when you're on a balancing beam. And literally, they'll just go straight for the legs, trying to make you fall off the beam. And you'll grab on to it, but they'll very quickly try to knock you back down from it. What you have to do is time a jump so that just as they're slicing at your legs, you're jumping, and then right as you land, you slice at them, because then you can get them before they jump back to where they were before. I kind of like that, you know, again with some timing, some effort, some actual skill involved in fighting. I would have liked for there to be parries and more of an elaborate system there, though. This one tries to inject some replayability by having artwork chests, and there's an alternate ending that you can find if you're willing to spend the time and effort. Honestly, honestly, I just get so irritated with the game by that by the time I finish it, I don't really care about the alternate ending. I know what it is. And it does sound cool enough, but I think part of the problem here is also that you die and just get frustrated much more than you did in the Sands of Time. And more than you do in the Two Thrones. This is, by the way, the longest of these three. This takes about two and a half days, or does for me anyway, did on these two playthroughs. It's pretty close to overstaying its welcome. There's also one bit near the end where the puzzles get absolutely insane for the short bit. And I personally think they push you through a little bit much to not have a proper save spot in the middle of that area. The new voice for the prince is okay, I just don't like it when he tries to make his voice deep and sound badass because he really can't pull it off. Given how many different directions you can go in this, it takes a lot of memory. And I don't mean RAM, I mean personal memory and focus to ensure that you're going in the right direction all the time. Too often the immediate goal is a bit vague and you'll honestly have to keep both the immediate goal and the long-term goal, the current long-term goal, in mind. With this being more emo, the prince has now dyed his hair black and changed his uniform armor to be more warrior-ish, I guess. And it's also quite clear that he supports the right to bear arms. Or to keep your arms bare, anyway. Oh, and get the lube ready, because the camera will screw you over. In this, and to an extent the two thrones, the prince is a bit of a heavy drinker. Granted, still just of water, but if he acts the same way when he goes bar hopping, he's either got to be a lot of fun to party with, or really dangerous to be around, because you might end up getting sliced in half. This one has a ton of weapons. About every type of enemy you fight will have a, an at least slightly different weapon. I do think there would have been... I do think that if they were gonna go for this more open fighting system, it would have been better if the secondary key was used for something useful, because it's fine for combos and such, but if you just click 